What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here. As always, I like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, and a solution for someone's problem. And uh, this is different for Dr. Vibe because I usually don't come on Blab or do conversations on Sunday afternoons. But these two, I'll say the word distinguished gentlemen, forced me to uh, come on Blab and Periscope and the Dr. <coughs> show. And uh, they're all good. They're good. They're good men. So. We're going to be sharing today about uh, the Distinguishment of Honor that is awarded every two years by the Black Business and Professional Association out of Toronto. Welcome, Claude Diamond, by the way. And uh, we've got Roger Dundas, who I've been blessed to know him and his family for a number of years, and it's we're very good friends. And we also have Gerald, because there's a Gerald here, <laughs> Gerald, Gerald Johnson of the Jamaican National Bank. And uh, they're going to talk about uh, how they felt and their awardees actually tomorrow, the events tomorrow. And uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, have Roger speak, I'll introduce a little bit about himself, and then I have Gerald come and introduce himself, and then Roger will talk about the BBPA and this honor. So Roger first, some background, please. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. And welcome, everybody who's on Blab today. I know Dr. Vibe. Thank you very much for doing this on a Sunday and accommodating our schedules. I really appreciate that. So, you know, it, it's it's a funny thing. You know, every time I think about um, career, I think about the fact they say that uh, every person goes through about five different career changes, right? And I think um, being now the publisher for buyblacks.com, an online magazine that is serving black Canadians exclusively and what's happening in Black Canada for three years, that's my, I think that's my fifth, our sixth career so and then being the publicist for um, working with 404 media group incorporated for the past six years now yeah, may is gonna be six years officially um, that was the fifth one so before prior to me branching out into this beautiful world of marketing and publicity believe it or not I used to be a chartered accountant I still am technically I still am a chartered accountant did my started my career with price waters back in the 90s i won't say exact when but you know not to date myself you know but um did the inter uh public auditing financial controller cfo accounting you know moved to canada did internal audit and then somewhere along the line realized that that wasn't really fitting in with my personality i would say most people would agree that um and not not to cast anything on, on accountants uh, many of my friends are accountants they're beautiful people but um it didn't suit my personality so i switched over in 2006. so i've been doing marketing and sales for that's going to be 10 years now yeah excellent and one with a wonderful family oh uh, the craziest thing about my family is that i have two kids so a boy that is four years and eight months old and I have an eight month old and they're both born on the same date. Yep. So that's that's a I mean no. only only me. Those things only happen to me, I feel. You know. So and then of course my beautiful wife Camille, um, such a tower of support uh, for our family. And uh we're I feel very blessed. Uh, I tell people all the while that the the last six years of my life have been the best six years of my life, having them in it. So, you know, uh, I, I call my blessings and, you know, I'm appreciative of everything. Uh, the smallest things, the simplest things. Most people are not like that and I don't know, that's different, but that's fine. Uh, I really appreciate everything, all the blessings that are on me, including Excellent. this Distinguishment of Honor Award from the BBP. There we go. We're going to get to that in just sure. a moment, but we're going to Gerald share a little bit about his background. So, sir, go ahead. Wow. I started at a young age when I was born. And, <laughs> and <laughs> I was born actually in Canada. A, a lot of people seem not to know that, being that I yes. work for Jamaican National, a Jamaican bank. Um, but my, my background is I started, well, I went to university in California, where I had went to high school when I was 14. So I left Canada when I was 14 and um, ended up playing football 
ended up getting drafted by the Toronto Argonauts in what was that way back in 93 and was brought on, cut, brought on, cut, brought on, cut, something like that. <laughs> uh, but, it was, but it was a very interesting time. And then I ended up going to Vancouver and that's where I started my, I guess, um, Roger, that'd be my first career. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, wow. and I, I worked for Glenair Technologies, and uh, I was a technical, I was in, I guess, an administrator in that in that in that company, which was actually fabulous. It got me started. Then, I, 1996, I went back to visit my parents in Jamaica, and for the first time, I did not want to leave. And so, what ended up happening is I came back to Canada, resigned from my job. My brother, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's a serious one. Yeah. My my brother and sister had actually also moved back to Jamaica the year before. He had started a, a telecoms company, so I went to work with him, and that unleashed uh, uh, wow a multiple a multi multi multiplicity of experiences. Yes. <laughs> which it was just what an awesome ride. I mean, we could talk all day about that. Uh, but I met my wife in Jamaica and we got married in 2000. And that was what, the best day of my life. It's been natural from that day till now. Um, then I got into, so with my brother, we were in telecommunications. Then we also got into the music business, had a recording record company, uh, promoted events, uh, <laughs> we were actually the first company to stream Reggae Some Fest live. You did, Roger. You you look like never, you don't know this. This I this, never this. knew any of this. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Only Doctor Vibe is able to get this from all the people. <laughs> wow. Um, and so then in two thousand and three. Um, the changes happened. My father died. That was one of the reasons I moved back to Jamaica to, to kind of, you know, get some more time with my, my parents. Uh, we had, we have a farm. Roger, you know, I'm a farmer, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and, and to be able to, to do that, but going back to Jamaica was just such a, such an awesome experience. Uh, you learn a lot because you're a foreigner. You don't sound and talk Jamaican. And then Roger, we all things that go with that. Oh yeah. Uh, but it was it was my favorite place to be is is Jamaica. When I touch down on the plane, and you walk outside, it's just like all the stress just kind of melts right off of you. Um, and and, and so, and the well, yes, the sweat <laughs> helps that, doesn't it? <laughs> and and in so in two thousand and three. Um, it, we just felt that there was it was time for a change. Uh, one of the things that that I learned uh, from my mother is when death happens in life, it, it means it's time it brings new life, and, and so that's a good time to begin to evaluate things and 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 your life and what's happening. So my wife and I decided to make a change. We came back to Canada. Well, she grew up in, but we came to to Vancouver. She did a master's in publishing at SFU. While I, I got into the financial industry. At first, I started with Sun. Well, at that time, it was called Clerica, but Sun Life, and um, it was an, another great experience. It it opened me up to a world that I had never thought of, or I had never, I didn't plan it. And I ended up becoming a certified financial planner. And in two thousand and six we made the decision to go back to Jamaica, which was, again, I mean, you, that's where my heart was. And that's where I started working at, at Jamaica National. So within about six months of coming back to Jamaica, I will say I chose Jamaica National. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I wanted to move from the space of where you have to just sell to I wanted to be an advisor. That was one of the, the best things that I learned um, in doing the CFP and, and looking at people's whole needs. And, and I wanted to start looking at people's whole financial situations, their entire life. And when I looked at all the companies in Jamaica, Jamaica National, in my opinion, was the only company that spanned 
I mean, with their group of companies spanned all the different phases of people's lives. And going and doing that was absolutely phenomenal. When I first started, the guy that I that was a part of the hiring process for me was the person that I wanted to work with. And that was the reason why I chose them. And one of the things he, he the piece of advice that he gave me is he said, Gerald, your first year, don't worry about your targets. Just get to know everybody. Make sure everybody knows you. And when you get invited out to speak, do not say no. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So anyway, three weeks after I was hired, he left and moved to Canada. <laughs> and, and you just kind of go, mm, mm. but anyway, I was there and I did exactly what he said. I got to know all everyone in all the nooks and crannies of Jamaica National and the group of companies, which was a good thing. And so what ended up happening is quite quickly, I was able to meet all my targets by referrals. <laughs> and and so that opened up that opened up a lot of doors. I wrote for the Gleaner, had an article writing the Gleaner. Um, I was a, a financial analyst on on a TV program, and so I did a lot of speaking. A lot of you know, it just didn't every. It didn't matter if it was five people. It didn't matter if it was two people. It it didn't matter if they were school kids or executives. I I, I didn't care. I just did like he said, go everywhere. And so in after about six years, I just felt there was need for a change. And I let the company know I was ready to move on and they weren't ready to let me move on. We're and, <laughs> and, and um, <coughs> so four days before my last day, I got a call from the group CEO and said, uh, Gerald, why? Well, you, I hear you're trying to leave me. And I said, yeah. And he says, well, do you want to go? And I said, well, no, not. Well, yeah. And he asked me what I was going to do. And he just said, are you sure you can make money from that? And then he said, look, let me cut to the chase. I have a situation, a problem in Canada. Can you go solve it? Even for three months. And so that was four years ago, Roger. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> three months turned into four years. I'm still going strong. And it's still going strong. And so the, this honor of, 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 of the, the BBPA's giving for me is it, I mean, I just want to, I just want to help people and contribute and, and make the, the world a better place. And, and so you don't really operate with any particular motive, um, but bringing people together. I mean, my life, I can sum up my life in one word. Well, two words. Being three words. Sorry, being a bridge. <laughs> They're growing. Being a bridge because I I am a bridge. So when people say, well, "What do you mean by that?" and I say, "Well, think about all the different functions a bridge is used for." That subs what I up what I do. So helping people get from point A to point B. So in a nutshell, that's me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing some of your journey. Uh, before we get into some of the BBPA, if we can make it short, how did you two first meet? Do you remember first well, meeting absolutely. each other? You do, Roger? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. Go so I was, I was at a festival, and a friend of mine said to me, you have to meet this guy. He's taken over at Jamaica National. He, he said he just came. So you had just come. I think you're in your second month. I, I don't know if you're there a month. So that was that was Jambana. That's correct. That's yeah, right. two months. Two months. Yeah, you were there two months at that time. And he said you have to come and meet this guy. And he he literally pulled me to meet you. And we sat down and we had a good conversation. And uh, we've had many conversations since. Many. Many. Very <laughs> very deep. Sometimes surface, but some very some deep very, very honest deep. conversations. Yeah. Very honest. Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, that's great. So, Roger, if you can give, and you know what, Gerald, can you make it short? Can you tell people the, the company you work for? Because this is a, we've got a number of people on, actually, the farthest person that's on distant wise is in Australia. Oh, wow. So, can you share with your audience 
the, org, the company you work for and fairly short because we want to get into right. the BBC. So I work for Jamaican National Building Society, which is uh, a financial institution in Jamaica. We are the largest financial um, conglomerate in Jamaica. So from banking to mortgages to investment <coughs> planning to life insurance to all, all, all those things is in the group of companies. So here in Canada, I am the chief representative officer. So I'm the one that is responsible to the regulators of Canada to ensure that we, we meet all the, the laws. And for Jamaican National, I'm supposed to take care of the assets and make sure that things stay in good stead. There you go. So Roger, can you share with us the BBPA? What are they about, et cetera? Because Gerald wants to know about what is the BBPA. Hey, Gerald. You know, the, the BBPA is uh, it's an organization that's been around from 1983. Uh, it's a charitable organization, and their, their mission is really to advance Canada's black community by facilitating and, you know, programs that support business, uh, professional excellence, um, anything to do with higher education and economic development within the black community. And um, they now operate from a center of excellence located at uh, 180 Elm Street. Uh, they also sponsor some other events that most people will know, like the Harry Jerome Awards. They also have a national scholarship fund as well, and uh, a number of several uh, other events. Um, I'm thinking of the, there's a Martin Luther King event in January yeah. as well. And this, um, this Distinguished Men of Honor alternates with the distinguished woman of honor so next year is the woman of honor and then we're back on again in 2018. yeah excellent excellent so gentlemen let me ask when you heard that you were getting this year's honor a group of one of the group of men that were getting this year's honor where were you when you heard the announcement and what was your reaction i'll go gerald first I think I was driving and I got a call from the president, Pauline Christian, and she said, Gerald, you've been um, selected as one of our distinguished men of honor. And, and my, my, I, I just kind of said, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess okay. inside I, I felt a little bashful is, is, is what I would say. Um, but but happy and honored. It, it's just like I guess sometimes you just don't look at yourself like that, um, singling yourself out from 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 the group like that. So it was truly an honor. But I was I was bashful. Roger, I, I think Gerald and I have a have a similar personality in that in that way. It, it's funny as a as a publicist. Also, all right, let me go back to I got a call from Pauline as well. And I was like, "What?" And then I was like, "Woohoo!" <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it, it felt it felt good, but at the same time, I was thinking, "I was like, wow." I mean, it's you kind of feel like, you know, wow, you know, this award, and for somebody to think that I have contributed to the the black community in in that at that level. I mean, you know, I'm. I'm being honored against somebody like Spider Jones. Yeah. Spider Jones. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that that's like that's like way, you know, way above my my pay grade in terms of you know contribution to the community and everything. But uh it, it, it definitely it feels good. Um I, I'm a, I, I, again I'm a little bashful about it. So technically I haven't really promoted it um per se i mean i call all my friends and say oh i'm getting this award i'd love you to attend the event and um, yes i'm promoting it through the company and all that but i, I feel kind of weird you know it's a it's a funny thing to say okay i'm getting an award it, it, it seems strange i don't know why fully understood oh uh, you you two are brothers from another <laughs> mother it's <sounds> like <laughs> You know, that's, that's all good. That's all good. What do you feel, what does it mean to you to receive this award? You, you said your reaction. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to your families in any way? 
is there there's a significance of meaning for you in receiving this award? Either one of you can start on that. Uh, I would say the significance is um, for if we talk about family. So uh, my I have a daughter. She's she's four. Her her and Chase are, are good friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and what what I want for her is to see an example that to she can model and replicate. Um, and, and so for my family, my wife and I, what we want to do is, is we want her to see more because the more that she sees, it puts a picture out there for her to be able to run after. Um, and, and so largely for me, I would say that that is what it represents. But on a, on a larger scale, it begins now to, to speak to to others because you're not, I mean, it takes a village. Um, Roger, last week when we were, two weeks ago, when we were doing the, the, the JN Black History yeah. Month essay competition for kids, yeah. um, the high school's kids, my, my thing was, look, you guys, we, we are opening things up for you to, to see a, 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 a bigger picture. That's why we bring the media. That's why we, we, we hype it up. It is 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 so that you can see. We want you to see yourselves here, and, and and I would say for me that's what it represents. It represents an opportunity. Um. So so my peers, it 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 also does the same thing for them, um, because you know you, you just operate in so many different circles, and something that brings all those circles together, like. Uh, like when when I when I look at uh, some of the invites and some of the people's because Roger and I we run in the same circles, yeah. and so you see some of the same people and hearing them come out. But then there's people that, like I just got a, a an email from some people that have never ever come to anything from the black community, but then again they've never been invited. Yeah. So, so Roger, you're gonna see some faces <laughs> in yeah. the crowd, and it's not just one or two. Yeah. I mean, those were some of the first people to respond, um, you know, and it it means a lot. It means a lot from that standpoint. Roger. What does this um, receiving the award mean to me? Um, it's uh, somebody has just given you more responsibility and you need to live up to that um, responsibility and um, and be accountable for your actions right so you have to try to to represent and um, represent the community as best as you can represent your family as best as you can uh, represent the brotherhood as best as you can so you know you have to be a better man you have to be a better person and we're not perfect i mean we we have made we have sinned today right we're all three Christians online here. So we've all seen today. There's been something that we did, some bad thought, something that we did. But it doesn't mean that you can't do better yeah. than you did today. So, you know, I, I think that's that's the thing. When I when I thought about it, I was like, wow, now I have to really step up my game in in my in my quest for you know helping the community. And you know, my thing is personally, you know, running this buyblacks.com magazine the goal is to try to get as much black owned businesses coverage that will hopefully get them stronger economically right so because people say that um like in the jewish community the money changes hands 10 times and in the black community it changes hands once which is not good we need to step back from that and say okay how can we support more black owned businesses? You know, um, why should I put my money in in TD when I could go to Jamaica National? So I'm, you know, Gerald is gonna see me soon opening up an account, right? Because I, I need to put my, my money where my mouth is. I can't just be talking about this thing and you're not doing it. You know, stopping at a black restaurant. I know you like you like McDonald's or Tim Hortons or anything like that, but yeah. you know, stopping in a sunrise sometimes. I don't know the owner of Sunrise. I don't know the owners of Ritz. I don't know the owners of most of these people. But you know, just mm -hmm. just support them. They need your support. And I think that it, it, it's when getting this award, 
kind of kind of triggers that thought in my mind like how can i support more black owned businesses that's the thing Get, getting this award and you mentioned it a little bit roger being regarded as a distinguished <laughs> man of honor does does it put any more pressure on you yes i have to dress better now <laughs> 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 I'll remember that. <laughs> there goes my cloning allowance. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was good. That was good. Yeah. But does does it does it does it put in and, and, and do do note anyone who's watching this live and repeat these are distinguished men. I'm just Dr. Vibe. I live in the same city as them. Listen to him. A distinguished man. I am just online broadcaster. These are the distinguished men. So please note that. So, so no. Getting back seriously, does it put any more pressure on either of you in regards to achieving your goals and your dreams, girl? I'm gonna say, does it put more pressure? I'm gonna say yes. Um, but you know what? Pressure is not a bad thing. Pressure. I mean, it takes pressure to make a diamond, right? Okay. <laughs> so, so when you look at it in perspective, uh, yeah, it, it does. Um, but I don't think it's something that we should fear. And I think generally in people's psyche, um, they shy away from, from things that are going to force them into the light that they could fail. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, uh, I think we need to put our, put the pressure on ourselves because like Roger's saying, it, it's going to uplift you and it's going to make you even better. Uh, if that's what you allow it to do. And and I think what this does also, because of the platform of the BBPA uh, being a, a national Canadian organization, and it is in the, the limelight. So of all the organizations, I would probably say uh, it, it crosses, well, not crosses over in the mainstream, but it has mainstream visibility. So... Um, what it does is it puts all the men of the, the distinguished men of honor out there to the public. So if people didn't know and see you before, now they do. So Roger is right when he says yes, they're asked better. <laughs> <laughs> because now, now there's there there it's no longer just within the black community, it's outside of the black community that there's an expectation. So Roger, you want to add to yeah, that? Um, yeah, the, the pressure is real. Um, ah, boy, there, there's just so much, so many thoughts going through my mind right now in terms of um, what what happens next. Um, I and again, I, I think that one of the things I I I try to do as much as possible is to be honest in in dealings with people uh, without you know sometimes without hurting people's feelings most times you know so and that that's not an easy thing to do as you know in business and you know being transparent and letting another person know how you feel is not always the best thing i would say gerald True. you know sometimes you need to kind of hold your hold your cards to yourself but really yeah. you know operating from a place of you know honoring every contract that you enter into somebody with mm -hmm. you know making sure that you know whatever you say you're going to do you're you're doing it right and mm -hmm. i think that that is something that you know not not everybody has has demonstrated that and i think you know when i when i look on the, on the distinguished men i i think about that that most of these men are probably men who are you know if you if they say they're going to do a it's going to be a it's not going to be b or c Right. And that is the thing. That is the thing that that I think is the most for me, even to be even more blunt in making sure that I stand up to you know what I'm saying is what I'm doing, and what I'm doing is what I'm saying. I want to expand the conversation a little bit because, again, as I as I mentioned, I'm very blessed that the viewers that come on or the friends I call them friends that come on the conversation on a regular basis are international and as i said we have david for all the way from australia i also i always get asked about 
what are the challenges that black men in Canada have? So I would like you two to take some load off of me for <laughs> once and, and, um, and get, give your perspective because again, we're keeping the realm of distinguished men, but again, uh, you're representing black men in Canada. Can you share with our audience from around the world, basically Canada, United States, et cetera, what are some of the challenges that you see or you hear of black men encountering in Canada? Um, boy, buyblacks.com really gives me a lot of information that sometimes I don't want to, to read. And you know, when, you, when you're thinking about um, the Black Lives Matter movement here, when you're thinking about people, you know, we don't have the the frequency of incidents like Eric Garner and all of that, but we do have them here as well. So, you know, the, a good step, I think, for people who are not aware of the situation here in Toronto is eliminating carding, for example, that is disproportionately targeting black people, black men, especially. So things like that, you know, it, it lessens your chances, I think, of, of advancement if if police are always targeting you. Um, I think there is, generally speaking, there is a, a fair amount of racism here in Canada that we're still trying to um, uh, overcome. It's not as blatant and in your faces in the States, yeah. right? But it, it still exists and um, it's it's challenging. Um, I think those are the those are the, some of the major things. I think the racism is probably and the, the, the inability for people to get the same opportunities that their non-black counterparts are getting. Right. So that that would be my that, that would be my two cents on that. Hmm. Ger Gerald, how would you like to add from the conversation? Because again, you're also in the financial sector. So you may be able to bring some wonderful perspective, not only just black men, but just blacks in, 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 general. in general on some of the challenges. Well, what, one of the, the, the first thing is going to be perception. And, and Canada is, is a country where um, there, there don't seem to be uh, a whole lot of points of integration. And when I say integration, I mean opportunity for for the meshing of 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 lives uh interestingly uh the example that speaks to to what i see needs to happen in canada um comes from a situation i was in i think it was last year i was invited to uh, a judge's house uh a black judge and they were she was having they were having a dinner and at this dinner was um, a, a black counselor and his wife, who's also a judge, and their children, who are one's a surgeon, one's a lawyer, and uh, who else was there? There was my wife and myself, and then there was another couple, um, a white couple, an older white couple who. And this, just to give you a perspective, for those of you in Canada that, that know the place, we were in Oakville. <laughs> <laughs> and um, at dinner, we were, it was actually, it was right around this time um, last year because I had all the, the Black History Month um, essay competitions. Jamaican National does a Black History Month essay competition for high school and, and well, elementary school students. And so I was bringing out that I was surprised to see that most of the kids wrote about their parents or family members rather than movie stars, basketball players, etc. And so anyway, we were just we were just talking and, and and at one point in the conversation, and we talked about, it was a very open, frank discussion like we're having here. So you heard about how it was coming to Canada in the 60s. And, um, you know, the, the same story, they're all older than me. So the same stories that I would hear from my parents, I was hearing from this couple from, from Montreal, a couple from Oakville, right? And at the end of, well, not at the end of it, the, one, the, 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 the white couple, what he said was, you know, 
we never ever hear stories like this hmm. of what happens in your community and and the positive things like i mean he said look around the table you guys are highly successful by by um you know world standards but we don't get this we don't this is not what we see this is not what we hear but again it's not our responsibility to tell your story and when he said that it was like he's so he's so right mm -hmm. because how can they tell a story they don't know about <laughs> they just don't know so so i would say that is probably one of the things that canada um, has to work to overcome and and it's not just on one side it's on it's on both sides because i mean racism all it is it's ignorance yeah it's it's rooted in ignorance and and when you don't know and i don't think people out there dr vibe would know or understand that that toronto is the most multicultural city in on earth and um so some of the challenges that are happening happen across racial lines so when you see a black person the things that are conjured up in the head you don't necessarily have the opportunity to 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 immediately show who you are because you're fighting against all the all the perceptions in their minds because all the that people see are what they see in the media what they see in the movies what they read and so that's why like last night um coming back from the ue gala we were in thornhill area so thornhill is another nice ritzy area and as we were driving through there were seven police cars with their lights flashing and and so traffic was backed up when we got up there the police had uh one one black man they were arresting on the back of a car and there were seven vehicles police vehicles wow. right <laughs> well, but there were um, no guns drawn mm -hmm. so i mean we don't know what the situation was but that's what sure. you're looking at from the outside so so if people are saying well what is it that does things like this happen in Canada? Well, yeah, they do. Strangely enough, they probably don't happen to to us because that you know none of that has ever happened to me. Um, no, me neither. Yeah, but so, I I have been pulled over. <laughs> traffic yes, stop. I have been too. Traffic <laughs> stop. Routine traffic stop. Yeah, yeah. I uh, didn't feel any way about the, the stop. It, I didn't feel threatened or anything. It was a very yeah. pleasant exchange. Even when I got a ticket, it was always pleasant. Yeah. So. I, I want to revert back to the distinguished men or manhood. What in your journey or who, what people in your journey have helped you become a better man? Roger. Uh, any. My, 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 go ahead, my Roger. mother is the person that I saw as the um the giver so my mother is um well for everybody's on the line she has alzheimer's now so she's in a nursing home now but prior to that she was a very um celebrated teacher she um she ran opened and ran the jamaica house basic school for 25 years that's the basic school that's attached to jamaica house right beside mm -hmm. it. it was a pilot project to to help uh, inner city youth kids to get a first class education and you know so i have some some memories i mean my mom's not dead and she's still alive and everything but one of the memories that sticks out to me is um driving to work with her um in jamaica on ligany avenue and um her asking me to pull over so that she could block traffic to come out of the vehicle and give porridge to a homeless person. Wow. No, she's not trying to score any brownie points with anybody. She just noticed that she, on her journey past the street, she would always see this person sitting there and figured that, you know, rather than bring money, she would give them food, right? And she did that many mornings. 
as as often as she she could <clears throat> in our household there was always somebody that was living with us always somebody she was trying to help out and i i you know as a youngster you don't really get that what's going on but that's just that was her nature that was always her thing to try and help people so i think if if i try to help anybody i always say that it's because of the example that i saw that my mother displayed to me that's why i'm that way today that's a great story that is great and for anyone who's watching if you want to provide any comments on the side or you want to ask these gentlemen any questions there is a seat open we'll go for probably another 15 plus minutes so if you have any comments or questions the mic the comment section is open and it's interesting roger we have something in common because my father was a educator mm -hmm. here in toronto at the same school in the same classroom for 32 years wow, oh my word. wow. 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 32 wow. years yeah. when, when he re when he retired he had over 600 sick days gee whiz <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly Wow. Exactly. Wow. So, and, yeah, and he's a lot alive. So I, I can relate to yeah. what you're, you're saying about your mother, about being a giver, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. But uh, I just wanted to put that in. Gerald, any people are, that have been instrumental in you are becoming a better man along your journey, past, pre, past or present? I'm going to have to say yes. <laughs> but there's so many. Um, sure. I mean, the, 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 I go back to that statement about it, taking a village. And, um, but first it would be my parents, both my mother and my father, my father is dead, but my mother, both of them contributed significantly to who I was by the time I was age 13, because I stopped living with my parents at age 13 when they retired and they went back to Jamaica. Um, but they had put everything in me that was needed for the foundation. Um, and, and I look at the example of my father who didn't have a father and how he purposed and determined in his mind and it manifested in, in the way that he lived that he was going to be the best father that he could be. And he, he was the first person in his, in his family to go to university. Uh, he was the first person to, to, well, to leave Jamaica. And he, he set an example for us. Um, it was him and my mother that from a, from a young age, I mean, they, they put it in us that there's nothing that we can't be. Um, they, my parents didn't even let me know that there was su uh, such a thing as racism. Growing up, growing up, I mean, I was the only black kid from kindergarten to grade nine in, in wow. school in Vancouver, right? <laughs> and, wow. and, and and until I left, I could never say that I experienced racism because I, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't know. And, but my, my parents wanted us to know that we are equal to anybody and everybody. And, and so there were things they did in the background that, that had to help protect it. So we didn't see it like that. So that there was nothing that was put in my subconscious to make me feel like I was any less. Um, so that, that would be my parents. Then I, I, I mean, I look at my siblings. Um, my siblings have contributed significantly to my life. I, I'm the baby uh, mm. of three. Um, my f football was a... a uh, I'm a, really a mainstay in my life. Um, so coaches, I mean, what they inputted in me, there's one coach I hated. He, he was coach Johnson and I hated him. I, I mean, that's the first person I have ever told to their face that I hate. Um, <laughs> and you see the emotion, so, but, but the, the thing is he, I understood later on what it is he was doing. He was making me prepared for the world. Gerald, you have to be 10 times better than everybody else just to get a shot. And, and so, you know, you, you think of those. I, 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 I think of um, another coach in university who, who 
just set things for me in, in a way. Like when I told him I, I, I didn't want to go to the NFL and I wanted to come to the CFL, um, that's a knock on the school. And, and I said, I've made a decision to go back to Canada, so I don't want to talk to any, any NFL teams. And for the coach to stand in and, and shield that, um, you know, I, I think of people like that. I, I, I think of my, my, my current boss, Mr. Jarrett. He's probably had the greatest impact on me from a contribution standpoint. Um, the man is so humble and what he does, he's not doing it for himself. It's like never about him. He, he stands in front and takes the knocks to forge the way for you and me. And, yeah. and when, you, when you hear and when you understand some of the things that he has to endure as, as running such, I mean, such a large organization in, well, it's a multinational organization, but it, you, you, just, you, you just have to say thank you. <laughs> I mean that that's the only that's the right response and and it makes you again positioning as a distinguished man how you have to um you have to rise up because someone else has done they've laid the foundation and you're standing on their shoulders so you have to perform. I want to go back to Roger uh, Gerald had mentioned where he's getting current mentorship from are there any mentors that you have in your life currently? And if you want to share one or two of them, that'd be appreciative. Oh, <clears throat> wow. The uh, mentorship is something that I I seek out. I definitely seek out. And one of the gentlemen I came across since being here in Canada, he probably doesn't even know he's a mentor, but I just love talking to him because he has a very um, beautiful perspective on most things that I respect him a lot. It's our former... Uh, Wilma's Boy School alumni uh, president, uh, Trevor Massey. And do you, uh, I think most people know Trevor. He's um, He used to be on the, the BBPA, the scholarship uh, board. He has since, I spoke to him recently, he has since gone on to start his own um, um, charity, if you will, to help uh, people in education. He's such a, he's a distinguished gentleman. Yes. That's that, and he, you know, I, I observed him running that Wilmer's event. And I was like, wow, if I could do an event like this, the way you do it, you know, I, I would have achieved. And, you know, so he runs that tight. He's very, very thorough, um, you know, excellent communicator. Um, you know, it's, it's he, he's incredible. Uh, then I, I also met another person because I, I don't know if most people know I didn't mention it, but um, I used to produce plays and dance companies and comedy shows. I started in 2006. Ironically, the same year that I stopped doing accounting, I, I pretty much started doing marketing and the produce, productions at, at the same time. And um, one of the people that I met, and I, I'm sorry I didn't meet him in 2006. Because if I'd met him in 2006, I would have made some of the mistakes I made in the business. It's um, Willie Jackson. So he's a big, um, he used, I think he was one of the first people to bring like Oliver to, to Canada. You know, like I, I've worked with actors and they're like, oh, he was the first guy to, you know, actually bring me to Canada. And, you know, this is like back in the, would have been in the 90s or the 80s, 80s, 90s, you know. Um, you know, so just tremendous insight into, why are you doing what you're doing? <laughs> Basically, is the question he would ask. I mean, why would you do it this way, you know, when you can do it that way? And, you know, so he had a lot of um, experience and insight um, into into that. So those are those are two people I know I, I could definitely just call out and say, you know, there are many more. There are many more. <laughs> Believe me, there are many more. But those two stand out to me more than anybody else. Excellent. I, I both want you to answer this conversation piece, and time is running down quickly, but we're having a, a great conversation here. To the men and those who love them out there, tell them how important, from your perspectives, mentorship is for men. Actually, um, is it, it is so important. It is, in all honesty, it's the only way. Um, 
there, there, it's, there's a success principle that says anything that you want in life, find someone who has it or is doing it and go and ask them what they did and do exactly what they tell you. That's the only way you'll get what they have. And, and, and I, I think it's a, a missing element um, that, that we maybe, maybe because it wasn't necessarily instilled in our culture from, from being young um, and understood or explained like that. And, and so with the whole thing of fatherlessness, I, I, it puts us at a severe disadvantage. Um, but mentorship is, in my opinion, it's everything. Yeah. Roger. Yeah, mentorship is, is key. It's key, man. Um, it's key for not just, um, most people think of mentor in, in, in the job, in the job area, you know, where, you know, you need a mentor on your job to kind of show the ins and outs. And if you're in the office, then in you know, the office politics and how to navigate through, you know, all of that. But uh, I think that the, the mentorship that men, like black men need more than anything else is somebody that can show them that, look, you can do the right thing and have a good life. You really don't need to go into this pit of negativity um, and just because everybody is doing it. Because I think that's what happens, you know. You know, I went through that as a kid as well too. You know, you kind of hang out with the wrong crowd and you start to do everything. You're doing, you're doing what everybody else is doing. And sometimes mm -hmm. you, you, in, you inside your heart, you know that that's not what you want to be doing, but just because everybody's doing it, you know. So you want that positive role model example that can that can guide you and and, and show you the way that's, well, that, that, that's what i think can, can i can i add something to that absolutely uh, absolutely um the the other thing about mentorship is uh roger roger alluded to it actually you didn't allude it you said it <laughs> um, that you have mentors or you can have a mentor that doesn't know that they're your mentor yeah um one of the missing elements, I would say, again, from from our culture is is reading. So I can have a mentor that writes a book. And, and so when I when I like, I mean, some of my mentors, um, I mean, it wasn't for years that I got to interact with them, but I, I, I watched their videos, listened to their tapes, um, read their books. <laughs> and, and and so there's a point in your life where you have to seek out a mentor and and the way you seek it, it is is by is by doing those things so so you may not have someone who right away comes to you like how we might have it but you've got to chase it and then it will come absolutely well done well, gentlemen, we are wrapping it up because uh, top of the hour. I know Mr. Mr. Roger has always things to do, and I'm sure, Gerald, too, you do. Um, any last comments you'd like to make before, to, to share with our audience before uh, we uh, stop the recording? Gerald? <laughs> um, I, the only other thing I, I would want to add is there 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 are some some elements of life that that i, I really feel that you you've, you've got to have purpose and you again that's something that you have to chase and you can't be running after the recognition you got to just let the recognition come um like how how it was for my 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 brother below in the, the corner there, <laughs> Roger. <laughs> um, you, you go just like his mother who, who saw a need and did what was necessary and wasn't looking for any recognition. Those are the things that I think we need to aspire to more that, that sets the framework for a better community, a, a better world. And it, it's, it's about that. So I, that's what I would leave people with. And if anyone would like to contact you, how can they do that? Uh, they can contact me. My email is jerrold at jnbs.com. 
as well as um, my Twitter. Is Can they see all of that there? Yeah, they can. Oh, they can. Yeah, reach out to me that way. Um, at, call me at my office, 416-784-9657. Roger, parting words and contact information. Parting words. Um, you know, I, I, I think about this, um, this Men of Honor Award, and I think about men. We have a crisis. Um, I wouldn't even try to make it sound like it's not. I mean, there's so many um, single models out there. Um, there's so many men <clears throat> that have grown up without fathers like Gerald's dad and um, there's some of us that want to we don't want we want to break that cycle right? so I know like Gerald's dad he said no I'm breaking that cycle right uh, I think that us as parents to you know we're trying to break that cycle as well because I cannot envision uh, me not being in my my children's lives you know that's just that's a nightmare <laughs> actually yeah. that is a, that's, that's a nightmare yeah. to me so you know I think it's to encourage that type of behavior more in in black men and um there, there's there's more I, I we really can't get into that side right now either i mean it's a it's a conduct of men and you know the, the issue of promiscuity and etc it's there's there's so many layers of things that are happening right now in the community and, and some people seem, seem to think it's okay to do those things it's not it's actually not okay and and, and i'm guilty in the past of doing things like that and that's why i said you know you can actually change you don't have to keep doing the same thing the same wrong thing that you have always done you can actually change and move towards something that's more rewarding so that's um that would be my my last thing to to say and um you know people can reach me um at roger dundas on twitter that's a great way or at buy blacks you can reach me there and um, we respond to our messages ASAP. There you go. Well, gentlemen, I'd like to say, first of all, congratulations on the honor. Thank you. Uh, it's well-deserved. Well, well-deserved. I'm looking forward to seeing you get it tomorrow night. So Thank I'm you. looking forward. And uh, it's going to be a great celebration. But it's a beginning of a next step of a journey yes. for both of you. Right. Uh, for me, I am Dr. Vibe, a host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show. As always, if you want to touch base with me, you can do it via Twitter. Also, email address is dr period v i b e at the doc, dr v i b e s h o w dot com. You can catch me on Blab. You can catch me at the Good Men Project. You can catch me at the, the list is getting longer, I'm so I got to make sure. Too. I'm by Blacks <laughs> soon. Also, also, uh, I am a brand, I'm a brand ambassador for a magazine called Cuisine Noir, which is the only online magazine that is dedicated to African Americans in wine, food, and travel. Uh, also, I've been very blessed. I'm going to be sort of going on a, a speaking or sharing tour. And if mm. you want to catch me in Toronto in the next few months, I'm going to be doing a presentation at the National Rights of Passage Conference being held at York University in June. And uh, some other things in between. I'm also a contributor now to, to Cuisine Noir magazine also. So, but just, you know, I'm just a guy. So I'm just a guy looking, to get, looking and getting a little bit better each day. So I always like to leave with a thought. And as we were chatting here today, so here's something I want to share with the audience before I leave. Clear priorities lead to discipline action, which leads to great choices. Mm. So as always, you're blessed and highly favored. You're a magnet for miracles and you're a solution for someone's problem. And speaking about manhood, doing a manhood show this Tuesday night. And here's the question for men. Men, what is the most courageous thing you have done? Mm. God bless. Peace, we all keep the faith. Bye-bye.